As a video production company, we are shooting different projects in terms of size, different genres, and sometimes we have to rig the camera like this. Sometimes we don't rig the camera that much. So when do you rig your camera? What kind of equipment do you need? Why do you need it? Well, Matthias, you're a rigging expert here at the production company. Yeah. You like to rig the camera. Yeah, I love rigging. And uh, Small Rig has sent us a bunch of uh, cool little uh, equipment. So we've been testing out uh, four different uh, camera rigs for four different uh, clients and different scenarios. Yeah. And we're gonna see uh, how that went. Looking forward to it. Stay tuned. We're shooting an event and I need you to capture everything, everywhere, all at once. I want the whole event from every possible angle. Can you do that? Cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is the first rig. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The main reason that you're rigging up the camera is it's like a practical reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, it's like when the camera looks professional, it just yeah. feels feels good. Yeah, I, yeah. I just really no, no, like but, it. But I think even, even like going from the bare just the bare yeah. camera to mm. this rig is a huge step up. Mm. It shows that kind of you you think more about the shoot than just bringing your camera. Okay, so the first thing I did was to put a cage on the uh, Sony A1. Uh, cage is really nice to just add multiple points of connections where you can just mm. mount a lot of other accessories. Yeah, because I remember from previous, like the GH4, when I used that, there was mm -hmm. like only place to mount something was on the hot shoe yeah, yeah, yeah. on the top there. So, uh, and then I mounted some uh, side uh, handles, uh, which gives it a nice way of holding it like this. Mm. And then I wanted to add a top handle because it's nice to hold it uh, from the top as well. You can choose to mount it both ways. But I wanted to add this cheese plate just so I could extend the mounting point so I could get get it more balanced so it fits more nicely in yeah. the hand. Yeah, yeah. because then you can both use it for carrying it mm -hmm. and then also for in the low shots. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. The the cage is kind of something I always been thinking like why cage? Like it's, it just makes more weight to the camera. Mm -hmm. This is a very lightweight camera rig. You could run around all day. Uh, it's never gonna get that heavy. Mm. This is mostly meant for like autofocus, just mm. run and gun. Yeah. Quick, simple, yeah. easy, lightweight. And when I used the GH4, I used the GH4 a lot. Didn't have uh, autofocus, so I'm, I'm very used to like holding the camera like you normally do, and then you you do the manual focus. But the A1, the focusing is so great, so you don't need to even focus. But what do you think is the be most benefit of having the handles? I feel like it helps to get uh, get the grip a little bit wider. Because yeah. if you're holding it like way too close, yeah. then all your small adjustments are mm. gonna get like amplified. Yeah. So the wider your grip is, the more uh, control you have and the more like stable it is, I yeah. guess. And also it looks very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's nice to have like multiple ways. If you're tired of shooting it this way, you can yeah. switch to this or you can, yeah. When we add more weight to the camera, you will also get more stable footage. Of course, these days cameras have very good stabilization. Mm. Usually, the cage is pretty. It's a bit beat up, but it's it's in surprisingly good shape. I think this was actually run over by a car as well. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard a story. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's pretty sturdy. Yeah. Cool. So that was the first rig. I'm excited to see the rest of the rigs. We have three more. So let's go to the next client. Okay, so we're shooting a short film, right? And we're a little tight on the budget, so we can't afford a big cinema camera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this is a low budget short film movie rig. Seems like these are stuff you need. It's not like you have added something here which is like unnecessary. No. I feel like that's the point of rigging up. It's it should be like practical. It's uh, just for convenience. So again, we've gone with the the same camera, the A1, but yeah. we rigged it up a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So for a short film, for example, you uh, would uh, usually want a cinema lens. And then you have manual focus, so uh, that's why I added the follow focus. And uh, we've also added a big uh, battery on the back, a V-mount battery. This is the new uh, VB99 Pro. How long will this uh, battery last? This setup right here, if you're only powering uh, the monitor, is probably going to last, I would say, a whole day. 
Yeah. It's so nice that you can power the camera and the screen yes. from the remount battery. Yeah. Because I've seen like productions where you have big batteries behind here, so mm -hmm. it gets so heavy. If you could put batteries here, you could put batteries mm -hmm. in the camera, but it's really convenient to just yeah. have one battery, yeah. which powers everything. Yeah. So I like keeping the monitor clean and uh, yeah, just put the battery on the back and that also helps balancing out oh, the right. weight so yeah. it's more like center if you want if you're gonna shoot handheld yeah it's easier to make it stable so obviously it's a lot heavier now uh, so you wouldn't run around shooting all day unless you build, build it up with a shoulder rig this is the variable ND filter uh, built in and it's like ND2 to 400 oh, okay <laughs> which is like insane it's like so we have enough yeah it's almost like black when you turn you it can all the film way. the sun then. you can't see through it at all the reason why you use a ND filter is to, to block some of the light from hitting the sensor. And the ISO, you usually want to have at a certain point the base or the na native ISO. Mm. Which and is the same with the shutter. Yeah, same with the shutter. Yeah. And since this is variable, you can choose how much light you want to block. The Mapbox actually comes with different like filter rings, so you can uh, mount it on different, different lenses. We have a flag on it as well, which is nice to have if you're gonna be outside in the sun, for example, shooting. You can change out the variable ND. Mm -hmm. We have to actually take this off. Then you can slide it out. Mm -hmm. and you can put this back on. Then we have another filter, like a filter slot that yep. you can slide yep. in. Some say that uh, the matter box is only there to impress the clients. Yeah. But uh, do you actually need the metal box or is it just to impress the client? I like both the form and the function of the yeah. Mapbox. So and when it's this easy to just clamp on and off, then yeah. it's like, why not just have it on? So this is for a short film. So it's meant to be on a tripod mm -hmm. mostly and you're pulling focus and you also have this uh, magic arm. Because sometimes you're kind of here if you're like on a high angle or low angle and then you can just adjust. And also of course when you're shooting a short film, you don't want a director and the focus puller and yourself looking at the small screen on the camera. No, of course. Where it's had the big one. So again, it's the it's a small HD monitor. Yeah. With a cage from small rig. Also on this focus ring, you can I can see that you can add like. Uh, yeah, you can add hard stops. Which means you can uh, set the focus point before you shoot. So you know exactly how much you should pull the focus to be able to maybe you change from the person to the product or something. You can then set the, the focus distance. Okay, so this was the low budget uh, film uh, rig. Uh, let's now go to the next uh, rig and see what uh, the client wants. So we are shooting a documentary, so we need to be flexible. We want to capture everything that's going on from a lot of different angles, and we are on a tight time schedule. So we will be shooting all day with almost no time to rig between shots. Yay! Yeah, nice. So this is the rig. It's great. Would you prefer adding more things to it, or is it can have you made this kind of like the at least as a shoulder rig? You you have. You could connect like a video transmitter yeah. if you want a director's monitor, for example. Yeah. Other than that, I feel like this is it's like the basics, but still kind of lightweight, but but professional. Well, of course, you can use a small camera like the Sony A1. There are many options, but if you don't have a person doing the sound externally, mm. we have great sound options in this camera uh, with XLR inputs. You can have like a probably a labor microphone and the shotgun microphone somewhere. But actually on this camera you have a built-in ND, so you don't need the ND here. That's true, but it looks <laughs> it looks professional. Or or you could uh, you could swap out the ND for polarization filters yeah, or uh, or other types or promist filters. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. So it's still still nice to have it. So what's new here? Obviously the camera, uh, the lens is a zoom lens since it's a documentary, so you might not have time to change lens that often so it's nice to be able to zoom in and out and uh, pull manual focus so the biggest change here is that the rig overall is meant to be a shoulder rig so we have this new uh, monitor arm which extends the monitor and you can tilt it up and down and you can also tilt this up and down and we have some uh, some handles over here, so it makes it more comfortable. What kind of shoulder rig is this? 
Uh, it's a small rig, uh, shoulder rig, and it's really nice because you can just take off the shoulder part. This is a uh, standard tripod mount, mm. so you can just put it directly on the tripod. And then back to shoulder rig. Yeah, so you can pull focus with your right arm, and the screen is not too much in your face. And most of the weight of the camera is on your shoulders right now, so it's more comfortable you're not holding that much weight. Because this is so heavy that it's like hard to get those micro jitters. Yeah. Okay, so this was the high-end uh, documentary rig that uh, Matthias suggested. Now let's look at the last client who will demand, uh, I don't know, something even bigger. Is that possible? We'll see. <laughs> I need you to really impress for this shoot. We're shooting a big commercial, so I want a big fancy camera rig with wireless video transmission to my monitor so I can watch everything. And we will be shooting planned scenes on a tripod. Yes. Mm? So this is the the high-end uh, cinema Hollywood uh, rig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, can we start with this one? Like that's uh, that's for time code, so it's easier to sync up with uh, with sound. Right. Marius, our sound designer, I, I know he has been like really fond of this. You can just sync with time code the external sound and the video itself. And other than that, this is meant for a tripod. It's a pretty heavy rig. And uh, then we have one monitor for the uh, camera operator. Yeah. And then we have one smaller monitor, which is for the... Uh, and the focus puller. Yeah. And then we have a uh, video transmitter for anyone who wants to see the picture, which is also powered by a USB-C. Is everything now powered from the same? Yeah, everything is powered from uh, from the battery. Uh, well, except the time code, which has internal battery. Yeah. So what I did was I took and uh, put some rods at the back, and then I attached a magic arm through a rod clamp. And then I mounted the transmitter on top of that, and then I put it in the position where it's like perfectly behind the camera, and yeah. it's like sleek and it looks good. And also, when you're changing the V-mount battery, it's nice to be able to move it. That was my concern when I first saw this, was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, if you're changing, how much do you need to... Yeah, I think if you put it slightly behind the battery, yeah. then you can actually take it on and off. Maybe something like this? Yeah. Because then you can just pop it off like that. Yeah. Why did you change from a zoom lens to prime lens? Uh, it's more common for bigger shoots because you have time to like rig the lenses, and they're usually better lenses. They're sharper, and they have... Uh, they let in more light, usually. Yep. I yep. also added a flag, so you can uh, block the sun or something if you if you want that nice to have. And even just if it starts dripping a little bit rain, yeah, you don't get it on your on your lens. The weight it feels expensive. <laughs> yeah, and it's cool. Like with this battery, you have four more outputs, mm -hmm. so you can like add more stuff. If you want to have like a wireless focus system, if you want to charge your phone in the breaks, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even do that with the battery. Some people may ask, like, why not use a, a, like a wireless photo focus? I mean, you could definitely do that with this uh, rig as well. You would just mount mount it here, and then probably mount to the power source to the to the battery. This one, which is uh, no electronics, compared to something that has to be run by a battery as electronic, will be more expensive, of course, and also not as reliable. So I, I would say that this is more reliable. Like, I know it's working. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, it depends on the project. If you're shooting in like a tight spot where you can't have two people in the camera, of course, then you can use wireless mm. full focus probably. You can actually attach this handle mm. and pull focus with yeah. this wirelessly. Yeah. And you even have two, like two Yes, uh, so you receivers. can also control the iris or uh, zoom. And I know that you have this, also get these straps to use the wireless full focus system on a lens like this. Great, thank you, Matthias. That was four different rigs for four different clients. Uh, remember that you don't need to rig your camera. This is just our ideas. Uh, sometimes I just like to shoot with the camera without anything on it. Sometimes you should rig. Yeah, and the good thing about rigging is that you can do whatever you want. You can use different parts that don't even belong together. If you have a lot of rigging equipment, you can just be creative and try yeah. to come up with cool and new ways to, to use the, the parts and uh, yeah, make the dream rig for, for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I know some people uh, like they just focus on shooting events, some people just focus on shooting on music videos, or some even just focus on shooting interviews. 
So having the option to, to modify your camera in a way where it's perfect for your genre and the things you shoot. Thank you, Matthias, for uh, teaching me as well. I don't know too much about this, so that was, uh, that was fun. I think I probably have to start reading a little bit uh, more <laughs> myself. So uh, stay tuned. We are making more videos coming very soon. Uh, subscribe if you haven't and uh, comment below. We always fun to see your comments. So, Adra. If you didn't know, we have finally released some merch, so you can go to views.no slash merch if you want to check them out. And if you haven't seen the previous video where we had a contest to make merch videos in 48 hours, check out the video appearing now.